Hello and welcome to this video. This is the fourth video in a series in which I demonstrate the shell file box. In today's video we will go deep. We will get way more technical than in the other videos before. I will show you the advanced web interface, I will show you how to set a password for the interface, and I will show you how to assign the box a static IP address for non-DHCP network environments. Okay, let's go. So most modern network environments, especially at home, the router's Wi-Fi that you connect to usually automatically assigns you an IP address. This is done with a technology called DHCP. In these networks, all you ever need to do to set up a new device is enter the Wi-Fi password or connect to the router via Ethernet cable and the router will then automatically assign you an IP address and you're good to use the router for surfing the Internet. Again, this is the case in many environments. However, in other cases, and you probably know when this is the case for you, for whatever reason, you need to assign static IP addresses to your devices. When connecting the shell file box to your router, you will then need to assign a static IP address to your shell file box. So, let's do this. As you can see here, I have already connected the shell file box to my router. However, the LED is not lit. This indicates that the box has not been able to connect itself to the VPN. In my case, it wasn't even able to connect to my router because the router offers no DHCP. I'm also connected to the Shell Firebox's Wi-Fi that works independent from the box's connection to the router. So what I'm going to do is I'll fire up the Shell Firebox web UI here at http column double slash sf.box and as you can see the box is currently disconnected. In order to assign the box a static IP address we now scroll all the way down and click the button enable advanced mode. You can see that you are in the advanced mode when you see the black bar here in the top area. The advanced mode reminds us to set a password first. We don't have to, but this is something we recommend anyway for advanced users. So I will set a password right now by clicking on that link here. I will enter the password twice. And uh, one caveat here is that you have to scroll all the way down and oops, click on save and apply to actually change the password. Otherwise, just hitting the enter key on your keyboard will not work here. After changing the password, I will now first have to log in. And then I select uh, network interfaces in the top bar here. And I will click on the edit button here next to the WAN interface. In the protocol drop down here I will then change from the HCP client to static IP address and I will click on switch protocol. In the field IPv4 address I enter the IP I want to assign to my shell file box. In my case I choose this to be 196.168.0.229. The net mask I choose to be 255.255.255.0 which works in most environments and the gateway uh, I enter the IP address of my router. This could of course be different in your scenario, but if you're familiar with setting up static IP addresses, you should know this, this data. Okay, so and I will also assign a custom DNS server. In my case, I pick one from Google, which is 8888. And that's basically it. I click on save and apply. And after a little while, this will take me back to the overview. And then I only hit on the connect button again next to the WAM interface here. And this then connects my shell file box to my router with a static IP address. In the top menu, I can then go back to the shell file box web interface by selecting services, shell file box. And then I can click on connect here. And now the box is able to connect to the shell file VPN service, even in a network environment without a DHCP server. Let's just give this a few more seconds to make sure it actually connects. Yes, and they could see it connects. And you can also see here on the shell file box that the LED is lit. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you like it. If you do, please click the like button. Also, please visit our blog at blog.shellfire.net. And remember, you can find us on the usual social media sites like Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus as well. In the next video, we will get even more practical. I will demonstrate a more advanced multimedia setup for the Shell Firebox. You will see that the box works with a relatively old smart TV.
that has no Wi-Fi interface and I will show the web interface on a smartphone. Thanks again for watching and see you soon.